Hello, everyone. I'm Mary Edwards with Connecting with the Stars, and I'm here with Krista Reza, who is an amazing woman who I got to meet last, um, last summer in Mount Shasta, and we connected and thrilled to have her as a special guest here today. She is a channel for the Orion Council. She's a teacher, a healer, an author, and an or artist. And um, I'll just let her tell her story to you and for the next period of time. And welcome aboard. It's nice to have you here today, Krista. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on this program. We're living in exciting times where a lot of us are becoming emotionally intelligent. We're becoming happier as a collective consciousness and figuring out this joyful universal plan that's been, you know, a sort of a big participation of so many star people who've come to assist this planet since the 1940s. So, uh, I have returned to this planet to deliver messages from a collective consciousness known as the Orion Council and created four books available on amazon.com with all the channeled messages from 10 years of channeling. So I can't wait to tell you all a little more about that. And I teach through Oracle Cards, which is a divination system a bit different than tarot, but it's complementary to that. And I create nature art because when we go back to nature, we can experience the healing. Right. Well, we are we are in a renaissance, a revolution, a reboot, a refresh right now. And I think, you know, like you say, if we stay positive and help keep the rise going, then we can all move together and which you're going to talk about, obviously. But um, yeah, and you say the 40s, I was born in the 50s and went on a craft at the first time and spent 70 of my years really in isolation and confinement because of the government and everything um, and NASA and the uh, um, military being shut down. And now we are at an, the most open, beautiful time right now where things are elevating and we're all here to, to play our part. And I'm excited to hear you share and um, what you have, all the, your amazing experience in 10 years at such a young life you are. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's taken 10 years to figure out what exactly this group was talking about, because when you're experiencing their consciousness from a higher perspective, it all makes sense. But after the median level trance state, one tends to forget what these entities say. So it's wonderful to record when you are working with master master beings, plant spirits, uh, reincarnated humans or collectives of consciousness so they are a collective consciousness and so they have said so many far out things but over time after getting on the internet after moving to Sedona Arizona after going to conscious conferences in places like California and Arizona and Nevada I received a lot of confirmation that this was all very real and when you are channeling you can deal with a lot of self-doubt because you're also dealing with the resisting consciousness that has not yet elevated itself to that openness of sensing and, and that's why I mentioned emotional intelligence because uh, Mary and I were talking about art when we met each other and we were both very excited about all the potentials you could do with color to draw something as simple as a, as a plant. Why, why should that be so profound? It's so profound because when you see something on paper, like a channel message or a painting, it becomes very real. You, you've taken something from the spirit world and you've put it into the physical dimension. And the experience of having that in the physical dimension is what is so profound, is what's so frightening for people. You know, when we talk about hybrid children and contact, when you're having the contact, when you're seeing an entity behind a person, these are very real experiences. And so that's why we're here in public to remind others that you can live a, a good life while, ha while being extraordinary or while being a little bit different and unique. And those are 
all ascension symptoms. This is all part of the accumulation of solar particles. And this is the attainment of cosmic consciousness, which not everyone is experiencing. And if you are experiencing cosmic consciousness, you're probably a coworker in the divine plan, an artist, a healer, or a teacher. So I found a lot of answers to what has happened with the channel messages and so on from theosophy, which comes from Hinduism. A lot of uh, ancient knowledge from ancient Egypt has helped me to come to terms with the, this reality. And more and more people are accepting this this heightened awareness you could say and the more you step into your purpose as frightening as it is somehow someone upstairs seems to be pulling strings for us some somehow we get blessed you know some of us get a pool on the second floor some of us get to live with Arcturus Ra <laughs> <laughs> these are these things so we've, we've got to uh, accept the joy and accept the the truth but also I've had to deal with a lot of <clears throat> ego and weightlifting to do this work uh, and it's not always as easy as it sounds but yeah I do have a lot to say about ascension um, I absolutely love the oracle cards these mystical magical things are actually not magic they're scientifically explainable but they'll they'll appear to be magic and frightening if people don't know so one of my messages is also for everyone to remember to read and to remember to study and to respect the people who came before us because if they didn't share their message how would we know about ascension how would we know about these space programs how will we know what to do if someone didn't take their time to be of service in that way? So if, if anyone here at all has felt confused about their life purpose, um, we all have a reason for coming here, personal reasons, and then reasons that we come to help the whole entire planet. So um, this is what a lot, of, a lot of the star people are doing, a lot of the young people, because I know Mary, you are you are concerned with the children in this dimension and the next, uh, which is so, so, so fascinating. I want to hear about the hybrid children because I've had one vision of a little blue boy only one time. And I felt that I had this child in some other dimension, which I'm still coming to terms with. So is, that, is there something we should do when we have the knowledge of their existence? Is there something... What can we do on Earth to for to help star seeds uh, connect with that reality? Are they in the fourth dimension or are they physically in the third dimension? The hybrids off planet, as you said. Well, I'll just talk about mine for a few minutes. But um, when I did the book as Barbara Lamb to do ET Friends in Space book, that's me. I drew a year and a half ago whenever I met her and we had some impressions with her, and I was drawing me and a little gray, and I had a couple of Turians that were with me on the craft when I went up in 1956 and 1957, or whatever it was, five and six years old, and then again at 10, and blah, blah, blah. I've been up till last week. I'd go up a lot, but I, and I put, just put clothes on the Arcturian, but I had dreams for a long time about little, about this, this first trip up there. And it's taken me all these decades to really have understanding, you know, the love and the compassion they have been here with me since I was in the womb and they've been for 94 generations. I've been, I followed and following my thread of healing and design in the interiors and what I've done forever. And because I want to help the children understand that you're not completely crazy like me or you or any of us that have had these contact experiences that we the memories that are art that we can actually we can access these memories and if we can draw them then they do become more real like we do as artists we express ourselves so yes i started seeing little images when i was a little girl and um, that's why this is so important to me to have done this book 
and to help other, you know, children just, and these are not great drawings, but I wanted to keep it simple so I wouldn't get a attack by real artists or anyone. <laughs> so they are very childlike, but yes, I, um, oh, I, I have, I have, a. oh my God, oh, that's beautiful. Oh my God, the same thing. <laughs> well, I, what I found out so far in my short, I've just been, I've been told for about 50 years by astrologers and different people back before we had regressions in the fifties or sixties, um, that I was going to wake up at 70 and I'm 71. And it literally has been like a snowball effect since then. I couldn't believe my, one of my Indian rug weavers 40 years ago in India said, Oh, Mary, you are a star seed and a baby mom. And then I'd go to Hong Kong with my, and then I'd come to San Francisco and go to somebody and all these people were saying the same thing. And I went, I feel like I've been pregnant my whole life. So basically I was, I miscarried a lot, but I did have, um, when I went up on craft because of my family that goes back and was part of the hybridization program, creating it a long time ago, my father and my grandfather, and I all the way back, obviously it's ancestral normally. And I was the one of the three daughters of my father, my rocket scientist father, who was also um, a, a mystic and a off planet a lot. He, he told me last week he was, he passed about eight years ago, but he told me he was off planet starting at seven that I, I he said he has 12 ch hybrid ch children himself. I've been sort of tracking him and the, my family ancestry all the way back. My sisters don't get it. They, they think I'm totally weird, <laughs> which I am. My mother never got it, but my father now being able to talk to him, we've been tracking it back more and more. He's mostly Pleiadian and Recturian. So, and when I went up on the craft with him at age five, he was there with me, I guess, holding my hand. Um, and, and, and I saw three small grays and then two Arcturians. And um, I know Metatron's always been part of my life and Arcturians, I'm mostly like Arcturian or all different things because we're a cocktail of all these things. But over my research the last few years from what I know, and then I've had a help friend channel exactly where my kids are on earth and, and on, on craft and in the Pleiades, because I don't have the capacity to do that. Um, but I know I have 25 hybrids that are a little too hybridy, a little too, too different to live on earth, or they would get made fun of or bullied. So there are one Pleiadian craft that you know, floats around protecting, learning, teaching that they do. I have about um, 30 on planet. On, and it's all places I've worked and traveled my whole life, which I find, of course, interesting. And in China, South America, um, in smaller towns. Um, and most, a lot of my hybrid children, I haven't investigated all of them, but for the most ones that I have, they're all in their 20s and 30s because I started feeling pregnant and I was losing children because they would take, you know, I, I'd be impregnated. Um, with my DNA, with other material from different beings. So I, most of my off, my children, my hybrid children, because I'm an ET human hybrid, obviously, to have these children. And I'm um, mostly Pleiadian, Arcturian, Syrian, Andromedan. I mean, I have, you know, we're all different, have a different lifetimes and come in and out for doing different things. But I'm here now to help people the children understand some of these things they've been telling me for a long time and also to take the fear away because we know as we know there's love or fear and they are coming the ets are our friends just like humans most of them are friends they're good ones and bad ones but mostly good ones just like humans so we're a lot more violent than a lot of them are <laughs> as we know but anyway so i know i've only spoken to my younger one my younger hyper children in the pleiades um and they are, they range in age from six to about 14 and they're fun and playful. We've done some art back and forth together, but it's taken me because I've just started waking up. I've had glimpses. I've seen ghosts. I've seen, you know, I've been on planet a bunch, but I, I, I'm just waking up now to all of these things the last few years. And since we met, you know, last summer, so I'm not an expert in it, but, um, if you think you saw those, you did. You, I, you probably have at least one, and I bet you have several hybrid children because of who you are and your, your. And I go back to England, and you know, uh, and all the way back. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But I, I have a lot of. Um, I've learned a lot about my ancestry, and partly why I wanted to have children late in life. That I did my late thirties was I wanted to help change some of the, maybe the the legacy of our family, even though it was powerful rocket scientists, engineers, wonderful people. There's a lot of money and power and Sherman Oaks down to, I mean, I was a Sherman, I was a Lapham, my, 
my direct descendant created the Mayflower and uh, Thanksgiving Day. So I know, and they've told me since I was a child and it, when I was born that they've been, of course, helping me and teaching me and supporting me and getting rid of some of the negative parts that I have. So I haven't spoken to any of my like 25, 28 year olds that have many children in China, but I have learned through a friend of mine who's very good at that to find their names and the location of where they live. And they have not had any interest in, in connecting with me, but my Pleiadian children did have interest because they bumped into a reading that I was having with a friend, Shirley Volstock last year, when I was writing a book for her when she was back actually passing of cancer and asked me if I'd write a quick book for her on what, where boobies go when they go to booby heaven. <laughs> And all of a sudden, when we were on this call and she said, oh, my God, your Palladian kids are here. They want to talk to you. And so we've had we have many conversations. So I've asked over the last couple of years and I, them directly, the ones that are in their 20s or 30s, are, is, is anyone interested in talking to me or meeting me? And none of them said no. But I know I've had a little more connection with the younger ones up in the Pleiades. And they explain more about it, about how eggs are just freely given. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm totally happy with what I've done and where I've come. And I'm so grateful to have had such guidance and love and support and learning all these years to allow me to do all planet work and all those things. So I, th I bet you've got a bunch. I bet you have 12. I don't know where I'm coming up with 11 or 12 hybrid children. <laughs> my, my neighbors, they live right down the block. Uh, this is called the keys of Enoch, the book of knowledge by I know, JJ, I, I have that book. Yes. <laughs> they explained what Michio Kaku explained or Enoch, the master told him that the Pleiadians are on the next level of evolution. And that's why so many have come here. So there's a theory that the intelligence level of earth has been, according to Hebrews as well, sort of a zero level one up of 10 inch scale. And so this would explain why so many star people are helping with their genetics so that the consciousness can rise. The, the ancient Egyptian, this is from Elizabeth Heitch's work on her past life in ancient Egypt, is that the, the ordinary human being coin of theosophy and spiritualism is more or less on a survival based animalistic kind of vi viking level you know eat pillage and and copulate so how do how do we help them advance if it's cosmic time to which is what the ryan council talks about there this is mishindu kuumba's art um they're broadcasting a bunch of them from a, a planet called myra there's about 75 of them in, in this council and they appear amphibious so anyways but they also broadcast from orion star system and they say they're around our planet so they may be in some sort of craft but they also can walk upon the planet as well so how do we go from animalistic which is also godly it's also godly uh, to uh, uh, an intellectual level and then from intellectual level to genius level from genius level to artist level from artist level to prophet level and from prophet to god man or god woman who's directly getting downloads from the higher dimension. So what Mary is saying is that these kids and with the, with the advanced genetics is we are, we are multidimensional. So that's part of, I've, I've defined a star seed here. It's my own little dictionary definition of what a star seed is. And they are having awareness of their multidimensionality. So uh, the, their gurus in India have said that, the, that for, for certain astrological arcs by Sri Yukteswar, the guru of Yogananda, he, he determined that the human beings wouldn't intellectually advance for another 2,000 years. But through certain methods like Kriya Yoga or healing plants or reading books like I'm saying here or, or ET genetics is we can advance a lot faster. So when we make the correct choices and align to our higher self in the causal plane fifth dimension, we'll be able to make better daily choices. And the star people are already already primed for this so it's it's not that you're better it's just that you have special gifts that others do not have and we're all part of god and we are all equally important but when you have a special gift it's a strong feeling i have that we we should use our gifts to help other people just like we utilize our technology to spread spread this 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 information that that is not scary and it, it is it is quite alarming when you know, your friend at the UFO conference says, oh, 
your eggs are highly coveted in the galaxy, plus you're amphibious too. You know, what do you do with that? It's a multidimensional reality. <laughs> Well, we just keep going and helping others and doing the best we can. And I just keep getting told, you know, you're here, you, you, you know, you're here to help others, which I know I'm here to spread. I heard last week, which or a couple of times from Metatron, which I love. I'm here to spread. I'm an energy connect. I'm a light connect like you are. I know you are. And I'm here to spread, which is the coolest thing I've ever heard from any. And anyway, thank you so much for saying that to me last few weeks. Um, I spread art and color and light to children and children is my is one of my is my focus and I've I've been told that for decades but I didn't really have anything to talk about or to say because I didn't know enough and I hadn't transitioned over into this moment that I've been waiting for for all of us to work together yeah but we do play our part and you know we're all different we all are special we're all here to play our part and the acceleration when we do dive into it is, you know, we, it just keeps happening faster and faster. And the time is now to make these decisions because this is an, such an important, this 2023 and 2024 that we've got to really help uplift. And I call my interior design work and energy work space lifts. If we can continue space lifting, which is like an energy lift for all of us together, we have hope to be continue moving in the cycle to heal Mother Earth and heal ourselves and do it keep advancing up and up and up. So um, it's a beautiful time to be here if we do our diligent in our days. Um, like you, I may, I'm very orderly, probably to a fault. Um, I don't have much of a social life, but I try to do the best I can with my little tiny ripple that I do, my intention, my manifestations <laughs> every day. I know makes a little tiny difference to the collective for all of us to step in and and really commit to this love and this time right now because that's why we're all here to contribute together. Sure. <laughs> and the thing, there's a teacher Osho who said people are afraid of great art. And when I read that, I thought, no, I'm not afraid of art. But, oh, it's so different. When you begin to clairvoyantly see things or see a flower of life or see someone's thought form as a color spark in the room, it can be quite alarming if, if one hasn't been trained because we, we only have so many ashrams in the United States. We only have so many uh, temples where this is taught and practiced. So I, I don't know about you, but I didn't go to psychic school you know, as a teenager or metaphysical university. It was all in secret at the library, spending my money just to get the knowledge <laughs> then Europe. Right, and the feeling because we feel so intensely and well, I always just wanted to be the frequency of mother earth. I mean, that's why I spent all my time like my 1200 square foot patio, it's all plants and trees. If we, it, it, that's where the purity lies that we all sort of attain to get to the frequency that we'd like to, to like get rid of the, the dark holes, which was what, the one real one of the great things COVID forced us all back inside the home into our hearts into our souls into watching people die and watching people be sick okay what can we do now to help and we all really shifted in that tremendous stage in our homes and lives and hearts and bodies and souls we know but I mean if I hadn't had Baha'i temple down the street for me literally I'd go to church on the weekends as a little girl after I went up on craft you know five and six it was like this church, you know, I mean, I believe I always believed in God. I always thought water was God when I was really little. But I would jump on my bike after, um, you know, church and ride my bike and spend a couple hours at the Baha'i Temple in Wilmot, Illinois. And my parents would go, "Why the hell are you going down there?" And I said, "Because it's I don't know." I mean, I was like, <laughs> I was that, <laughs> and I go, "I just it's peaceful." And it's happy. And then I realized, I learned recently that they were really connected. It's all about unity is what they are. So we go wherever we go and learn. And you've been a self-studier. I keep wanting, I want, I don't know anything. I just want to keep learning so I can be more informed and get more energetically connected to my own space and places and um, um, gifts to expand more. Every day is a new day to learn and grow. And thrive. Yeah, most definitely. And you said that the COVID with 
the heart chakra. This is exactly what Sonia Choquette just said the other day, who was contacted by Pleiadian. She said at the end of her autobiography, she's a, a life coach. <clears throat> She was born 1956. And I thought, oh, that's very interesting that people close their heart chakras before you, because we're supposed to walk the middle path and your heart uh, coherence communicates first before your head. And I recently, before this broadcast, we were talking about our personal healings. And in my healing, I realized I was too much in my head. So if I hadn't had this healing, I would just be running a lot of, I would be very useless in my service because I, I would be thinking and uh, taking action. And the healing taught me that if I talk about what I love and I do what I love and I think, okay, what can I do? <clears throat> and, and go back to nature and uh, also connect with the, the star people in Sedona. I was shown visions of, of the people who are, have been biologically adjusted and they tell me they have strange looking eyes, a lot of them, um, or you'll just see them kind of morph. You'll be standing in the dark, you know, sober and they'll just morph into a lion or some kind of blue being, or you'll see these zigzaggy lines on their face and they, they, they all know that they're a little bit different and, and unusual uh, that, you know, like with love is, that loving ourselves is, helps us to self-preserve and then loving each other helps us to remember that we're all one that we're all we're all here together and what a joyful experience it is to be to be alive together at this time um if that's just, just remembering that it just creates this very very good safe feeling and i actually can feel the connectivity to the heart chakra so if anyone's ever worried you know should you um these healings can happen through uh, a guru or saint, a sage, someone who can touch you and then you can have cosmic, electric, faux hot solar energy enter your vessel or you can go to Peru, you can have a, a legal ayahuasca healing ceremony session. There's many pathways to ascension that I've, you know, I've researched it for months and months and months. What is the Ryan Council talking about? And it's, it's the enjoyment of, of our gifts. Uh, it's the, it's the whole uh, <laughs> enjoyment of the, all the creative possibilities. Cause there's so much that we can do in one lifetime. Our, li our physical lives are so, so super short. So there's just no time to, to be warlike and negative and angry, um, which is preventing the contact with our space people. So the advanced civilization like a blind frog ranch with Dwayne Ollinger, the Hinden system from a thousand years in the future, they're, they're waiting for us to, to stop being warlike. So the wars are keeping us on a very low frequency and that has to deal with the animalistic intelligence levels. Like, well, can you tell a dog that it has a potential to be a wolf or can you tell a domesticated cat that it can actually be a lion? Uh, it's, it's tough to, to, but somebody has to walk show the way and be the one to demonstrate the abilities without a sort of satanic selfishness or ego. Uh, and that's the happiness. I think if we radiate our own happiness and joy, others will look to us. And they say star seeds have this mesmeric sphere of influence. So you will, people will come to you and there's nothing you can do about it. It's your design that way. So the truth is what refuses to go away. And when people come to you requesting something over and over again, that's part of your life purpose. The joy of your magic skills is part of your life's purpose. The desire to be of service is an is advancement because ultimately we and the planet will, will spiritualize, but that's not for another 17 million years. So don't worry. <laughs> Well, I know, but it, you're so right. And it's all positive. I mean, we are so lucky to be here with all the beauty and the nature and the change. Sure, we're a division. Everything had to sort of has to crash and burn right now and rebuild and reboot and refresh and change in order to create newer, happier, more functional systems that will allow all of us. It's that self-love and self-acceptance and that all beings, all of our, we're all the same. You now that's why I put this in the book in the new kids book I'm working on right now. It's like, just, you know, quit being so judgmental. I grew up in the olden days, which it was never explained, never complained. We never discussed anything. So now it's a whole new world. 
you know, all planets and all people are the same different. I just made that up, but I mean, we are. Who's to judge? I mean, yuck. <laughs> so anyway, we are improving. When did you start knowing when you were a child that you were different? Because I've always felt so hypersensitive my whole life and I didn't like mean and I didn't like angry and I didn't like nasty people. And I just started painting rocks the minute I could pick up a paintbrush. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, some things happened that didn't even occur to me, but I, I didn't tell anyone some strange things like my Archie comic duplicated on my shelf after it was sold out copy. I used to hear the astral plane while going to sleep, like people's telephone conversation. It was very comforting. I used to try to change the size of my hands and feel, feel the energy fields of that. But um, as a kid, I, I wasn't interested in, in popularity. And I was kind of looking over the, the kids who were being teased or the, the really problematic kids in class. I used to kind of want to give them a little special attention because they were having a hard time. And I didn't understand why the other kids were bullying them or uh, not including them, that kind of black sheep looking after the other ones. So maybe, yeah, maybe that was there's something there. But definitely the, the interest in topics like astrology was not shared by my peers. Um, only one goth, gothic heavy metal fan in my college was, she was interested in the spirit world because she was medium mystic. But the other kids didn't have any inclination towards reading channel books or uh, having these synchronistic visions of number repeating numbers um, in the hologram. Uh, so I didn't know, I didn't know that how psychic I was because I thought it meant seeing ghosts <laughs> and I always wanted to see ghosts, but other things happened. Right. Well, I remember starting writing one, 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 one. I mean, I thought, what am I, you know, my dad's a rocket scientist and he told, why are you writing ones? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm not doing binary, you know, but I know which I learned later, but I was always, I, I was bullied because I, they'd say, how can you be so smart and also be basically so dumb? Because I have ADHD, I have dyslexia. My mom can write forwards and backwards. Well, she just passed a couple of years ago at 98, but she could write forwards, upside down and backwards. So we were all had every learning issue. My son got it too. But it it was that hypersensitivity that got me into teaching kids, six to 12 year olds, and then our therapy to kids and to suicidals at Boulder Community Hospital while I was in college. And you know, then I taught college at the Academy of Our College here, and I took them down to NASA when I got hired at Moffett Field and took them to educate them and expose them. So we just, I've always just done what I really wanted to do to further my, my creativity. And like you, we, we, we just naturally, if we're given that freedom, I said to mom and dad I recently, and they're both up there now or here or wherever, um, I said, why did you just let me do whatever I wanted to do? Everything else was so rigid in this fancy household. We couldn't, you know, we had a huge house on the beach. We couldn't go barefoot. They said, well, we knew that when you got your BFA, we, we hoped that you would take your next step. So we just, and I did, I went to interior design school, then I went to architecture school, then I went to sustainability school while I was working and stuff. And they just said, we wanted to give you the freedom to figure out who you were. And I literally heard this a couple of months ago. And I said, I thought you didn't care. And they said, no, uh, you were on your own mission since you came out of the womb <laughs> that, and just quietly, separately. And I didn't, my first words were like, I want to go to the beach and paint rocks or something. I wasn't no, ever normal. And that's why I've had a, such a hypersensitivity too to children because I was made fun of because I couldn't, I could come up in my head with how do you do a, you know, something. I still have that. I could walk into a 30,000 square foot and know exactly in five seconds what 10 different ways are to solve it for a long term, short term, I'm like, what problems are going to have down the road, but I can't do some normal things in life. But it's, it's all our intuition, trusting ourselves, you know, and also we had to put those blinders on in a way to allow ourselves not to be completely flooded by so many emotions and the things that I heard and feel and I can hear babies crying up in the fourth floor here. Um, but how, how did you learn those skills? Did you just keep, you know, obviously you're, you're bright and you're gifted do you, and you help others. Do you find people are mostly still stuck in fear or 
you know, trying to figure out their, their inner child from childhood, which is a big deal that we all um, try to figure out. What do you see people are really struggling with the most now? Obviously, there's a lot of dumbing down and control and fear and stuff. Is there anything that you see that there's this big shift, obviously, going on that's the most important positive thing? But what are people well, your age, what, what do you see as a problem? Or, or oh, what's that? Shadow, we have a shadow oracle deck for that. Oh, perfect. Of course you do. <laughs> you, you, you're Miss Problem Solver. I love it. <laughs> so she's so she's stuck. She's oh, stuck. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she's dangling in a in some. She's corded. She's energy corded. This person likes to steal uh, with uh, credit cards on the internet. Um, this person is a little bit repressed. He he's not really f emotionally free. He needs an emotional freedom technique. <laughs> These are insane. <laughs> Nobody else has these. I want to buy some. Are you in stock? Everybody has to get on the, uh, get on your email at the end. Detox. Everybody needs to quit drinking. I finally did a few years ago. Boy, I'm a different person. I mean, it's oh. just incredible. Detox and food. I mean, personal hygiene has never been more important. And I've always eaten well. We had chefs growing up. I've never eaten really sugar and stuff, but isn't it incredible how people are now getting how important it is to eat yes and the, what your body needs you yeah. know do people say that ayahuasca purges you through the vomit or the the poop but um i haven't found any other way to get colon worms out the intestine except with 35 percent food grade hydrogen peroxide so instead of a regular at home colonic with water or coffee just 10 to 35 raindrops in a gallon water will instantly kill a worm and lots and lots of bundles of them will will be released so that's i think that that's i think that saved my life uh and it it, it prevented my, a lot of mental health problems people who are have suicidal ideation um the i'm convinced these are caused by these life forms and there's thousands of them um, river flukes are the most common they have very thick membranes some have hooks in a the mouth they, they 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 the different species live along the large and small intestine so i've done almost a hundred of these within a year it'll make you very exhausted you'll sleep a super sleep deep uh, deep sleep but the paranoia will disappear the if, hearing voices for some people for a lot more a large most people hear voices that will calm down and uh, uh feelings of rage and anger will dissipate so yeah detoxing for sure and um that's that's probably the biggest one you know besides a lot of the psychology is great but that um that's probably the best thing i have i have today and we have a worms card for anyone who doesn't believe if you pull if you pull the parasite worm intestinal parasite card four times consecutively remember what Chris said on on mary's show Worms <laughs> need to get rid of those guys <laughs> right well you're such a modern version that everybody should know about and i know you're known and you've been talking for a long time and, and out there but you, this is you are so fresh and have these incredible um remedies and i love the order that you you have the cards you've got your books you you really are the full service help <laughs> to whatever um, you need to let go of because this is the time to surrender because we better do it now or we're going to really get left in the dust <laughs> or go <laughs> right <laughs> and the photo says a thousand words so if we support artists who are alive uh, we can put their art in collections on nfts non-fungible of uh, tokens on the internet cryptocurrency uh, we can pay for people's if we want to transfer photographs of original art paintings and we want to spend thousands or we can just buy collections from artists because this is a kinesthetic visual and auditory way to teach and it's very calming and it's magical because cards fly out the deck you get duplicates it's quantum probability if you like dice if you like dice theory it's it's the next best thing really yeah thank you for the kudos unbelievable really just unbelievable in the freshest most communicative way because cards do it picture does tell a thousand words i mean i've got my art up here but it's not your cards but i've got dna up there there's my star that actually i did i i drew after i had my one uh, one of my main ayahuasca time about six years ago in um 
Peru safely. But anyway, it just, it, it's a combination of all the mind, body, spirit that we just need to, that, and then cleaning out the cooties of your home, because I've been based in the home space. I've worked on a lot of hospitals. I worked on Marin General Hospital in the healing ward. I worked at the California Pacific Medical Center and, you know, lead-based pain and getting rid of negative vibes of a pillow or a chair that, you, that really doesn't serve you anymore. I mean, all these things add up, not only entities in your home, but the, we got to get rid of the de declutter our minds and our bodies and spirits and homes, all the drawers and the old stuff that just carries so much weight and negativity. Um, just get rid of it. I've loved right sizing like 50 times. I've never been so happy at <laughs> 1100 square foot condo. And every, I know where everything is. I love everything that I have here. My, you know, $20 lamp on a garage sale. And then during COVID, it was like, oh, maybe I should get rid of that because it looked like a COVID thing. And, but I, and my table that I found on the street like 20 years ago. I mean, my card I got a couple few weeks ago right there. Love stuff. And then you get, and then my, my things from Ikea. But everything is either used or made from people, made by my friends for me or were given to me. So it's all having the meaning that in your home, in your life, on your body, in your soul, get rid of your negative friends who don't get you. I've deleted so many people <laughs> in the last few years. It's just, I don't have tell, I, I, I just don't want to be around Debbie Downers or negative people who um, are not supportive of me and part of our tribe of enlightened people who really just want to do good here and help each other. For sure. There's a teaching that says if you're dealing with a group of people, to consider the interest of the whole rather than the individual. Because in my spiritual community, people have conflicts with each other and personal interests and fighting over boyfriend. And it, so really, it really holds us back from getting things done in workshops and uh, think tanks, uh, planning, just planner day. Let's, let's, let's make vision boards together and make magazine cutouts for what we want to manifest so we can continue to focus. And, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's probably the next step after after people know their psychological role or their life task or their purpose or their joy, what they love to do. Then we can participate in the communities and bring that to the community and not go to the community to fi to figure ourselves out, but do the inner work alone in our house, in our safe, neat space, and then go when we're ready to meet the <laughs> Right. And I actually, I wanted yesterday, I was um, talking to somebody and I, I want to do a, when I came to actually to Sedona about four months ago, and I was only with a friend for two and a half days. Anyway, I drew this yesterday and I went, I just was doodling. And it's like, if people just sit down with a paper and a pencil, discover my inner voice more, you know, get rid of what I mean, draw it, write it down. And I, I, we spent uh, her like her um, Wi-Fi was out. We were going to work on a project. I said, let's just spend three days outdoors and hiking and doing vision boards. And it, it all the things. I mean, it, that's basically all come true for both of us. So you know, when we, we got to get off our phones more and but listen to ourselves and our hearts and our beings and Mother Nature out there. It's, the, it's good that technologies, because of COVID and people are living off site wherever they want to and are going out to the middle of nowhere off grid. And we have the opportunity now to really go inside. And at this particular time, we need to really band together and share more. And the competition even between I see in the spiritual world, is, I, I find it pretty shocking because I'm new in this. But um, I find that there's competition there. I thought, what a weird place to see and feel competition, but that's human. And that's, um, there's always, wow, there's always that too. So we just have to, if we're hypersensitive, like a lot of us are, we just have to try to step away. I mean, that's why I go to things and I'll stay for half an hour or 10 minutes. I always come early. I always leave early <laughs> and just really spend more time in your head and your heart. Like you say, I, I, this is my studio. I, I love, I've always loved being home. I've never changed. I'm, I came out this way and I'm still as a senior citizen and feels like I'm just a child starting out right now. <laughs> um, um, and I see so many of my friends who have either died or infirmed and they're just like, and it's like, never mind. That's why I've always hung out with a lot of young people who are creative and interesting and want to learn and help shift the world. And we all are doing that. 
every single day. And I think people shouldn't be afraid to have a positive attitude. Just stop the other, just say no. I used to show socially smoke cigarettes and, you know, back in the olden days. And one day I just said, stupid, I feel dog do, like I feel terrible and I can't run and I can't do yoga. So, I mean, we can just stop certain things. A lot of addictions we know we can't, but there are a lot of things we can just stop. And I did that with drinking. I just thought, Ugh. you know, I used to drink once a month, have a few glasses of wine or something and it, it doesn't, it's just not worth it. So anyway, we can, we can be and do, do whatever we want to do if we just believe in ourselves and just do it. Just stop complaining. <laughs> this is the new normal. We are the disclosure. Woohoo. Why wait for, don't wait for anybody else. The time is here and now to change and shift and find tribes like you, amazing people like you, Krista, who are doing so much for so many and talk about it, share it and help each other. Hopefully in other languages, one day. <laughs> right. In Espanol and Finnish language. Because uh, I, I know we have to end this call soon, but Mary was telling me how she's traveled and I've been to 13 different countries and I'm still learning now the difference between someone who has not traveled and someone who has traveled. It's, you get a very different perspective when you've been in places that are very impoverished or have a completely different system of strictness is we, we're really so lucky. We have, we have a lot of benefits and good things in the United States uh, where we the whole world is watching us here. So just a little thing you do on social media or on your local newspaper, it has a big impact on this planet. This is the, this is the ancient Atlantis return. So never underestimate the, the effect that you have on other people. Even if you have a hundred views, that those those count and those change that that's how the change starts. So we can use these devices for good, and we can use our our art prints for good. And there's a a ricochet effect when we just get a start, and we just we just do the thing, just, just do it. Yeah. Well, you do are remarkable. No, and just do it. Just yes, yeah, say yes to the right things, and say no to the things that don't serve us or anybody. So um, I hope you will, will you come back again. I'd love to do part two with you because you're we didn't get to complete all the things that we wanted to today. But um, you're such yeah. a bright light. Thank you so much for all your beautiful energy. What would you give people? If they don't know you, your email and or your um, website, so they can find you and um, check out your website and what you offer. Yes, we're. I have everything on kristarisa.com. Also, the well, Mary might like this one. I have some business cards. You might like, this is one of my business cards. It's called Space Flower. Oh, it's beautiful. Of course I do. Oh my God. I love you. have a, a Saturn and they're beautiful. Oh, so oh, I love it. Turn so they can see how you spell your name. You see it's K-R-I-S-T-A-R-A-I-S-A.com. And, and, um, well. and, uh, Anyway, I love you. Thank you so much for all your great energy and information today. And um, do you have some parting words before we tune out here? Yes, stay tuned for more information on Infotonic Technology by Arcturus Ra coming on this show very soon. Oh, good. Well, I can't wait to hear that. Thank you so much. Lots of love to you and all. Thank you.